Arkansas becomes one of many films this season to skip theatrical release and go straight to video on demand. Unfortunately, it's not really worth the $5.99 rental price. I'm Joe Aserno, this is Real Talk. Okay, so for those of you who have tuned in before, you may have noticed that I'm doing things just a bit differently in terms of the structure of the show. Instead of having these long-ass episodes with multiple segments about movie reviews and or motion picture industry headlines that drain the life out of both you and me, I figured, you know what, maybe it might be better to just have one of those singular segments be the full-length episode. So if you haven't gotten a chance to yet, don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, follow all the social media pages that I have outlined in the description so that you can get more updates through those avenues as well. And just to get right into it, in Arkansas, two low-level drug distributors are on the lookout for their lives after a deal gone wrong, and they're hunted by their boss whom they've never met before. The film was directed by Clark Duke, based on the novel by John Brandon, adapted for the screen by Clark Duke and Andrew Boone Krong, and stars Liam Hemsworth, Clark Duke, Eden Brolin, Vivica A. Fox, John Malkovich, and Vince Vaughn. When I first finished watching the trailer for this movie, when the trailer was released, however long ago, time is no longer the construct that it used to be thanks to COVID-19, but when I first watched this trailer, there were a couple things about it that made me think, okay, this movie has the potential to stand out from other films of its kind. And one of those things that still holds up is the fact that it is a Southern gangster story. I figured, you know what, taking us all the way to Arkansas is a nice change of pace from a lot of these crime gangster movies that take place in New York or New Jersey or Boston or L.A. But as I was watching this movie, I've realized that a change in setting is not enough to cover or change the facts that I did not give a single fuck about anyone involved in this movie, about anything that happened to the people involved in this movie. I noticed just how much I struggled to finish this movie that's just under two hours long and the amount of times that I fell asleep while it was playing. And again, it's not like my energy level was particularly low going into this movie. I've fallen asleep during movies before. I've fallen asleep during Goodfellas, and that's one of my favorite movies of all time. I've seen it a million times, but I noticed the one time I fell asleep during that movie, I was already tired. It's not like the movie did a number on my blood sugar and put me to sleep, unlike this movie did with Arkansas. I was, I guess I had an average energy level <laughs> going into this movie, and I came out with much less. And again, that's not to say that, you know, if you're emotionally tired after watching a movie, that's one thing, but I was just tired after watching this movie. And like I said, it's just under two hours long. That's not a very long movie. That says something about this particular film. There's a lot of dark subject matter that's associated with the nature of the story. Again, given that it's two drug dealers on the run for their lives, but there was very much a lack of parallel intention that was that I think should have been there for a story of this level of darkness, for this level of weight. And it just wasn't there. And I don't know if that's in part due to the low-key approach that's taken when it comes to telling the story, but that's not to say that just because a film has a low-key approach to its making that you can't necessarily feel anything or feel a lot even. I look at a director like Clint Eastwood, one of my favorite directors of all time, and I look at his film, Million Dollar Baby. Again, like his other films, Million Dollar Baby is no stranger to his low-key approach, but that film not only ends up being very entertaining and engaging but very emotionally affecting very emotionally powerful and I did not feel that with this film at all not even close things felt kind of unfocused with how they developed the characters you start out for I want to say the first 30 or 45 minutes of this film getting to know these two drug dealers who are on the run and then at that point it takes a total shift and starts developing the backstory of Vince Vaughn's character the character of the gang lord who ends up trying to hunt these two guys down. In terms of acting for Arkansas, the acting is competent. It's fine, I guess. But in terms of everybody disappearing into their roles, no one in this movie does that. Liam Hemsworth is in this movie. And again, he's not bad. He's just not particularly good. The emotions that he was trying to portray, I believed, but I still very much saw him as the hot guy from The Hunger Games. Same thing with Clark Duke. I very much just saw him as the geeky kid from seasons eight and nine of The Office. And even with Vince Vaughn, I was very much looking forward to seeing how he would do again in an intimidating role of authority like he did in Hacksaw Ridge. He was great in that movie, but 
with Arkansas, again, just same thing. I just kept seeing him. I just kept seeing Vince Vaughn. There was nothing memorable about any of the people in this movie, especially the villain. I think with a movie like this, you're expecting the villain to stand the test of time, hopefully. And I'm going to be honest, I'm going to forget about this guy by next week. At least one of the things that definitely does work for this movie is the visual look. Even though there are camera zooms, zoom in and outs, that I'm not exactly sure how to feel. Yes, it gave it a somewhat different feeling to it all. The overall look of the film, that did work. Like I said, that's one of the things that I feel like this movie does have going for it. One of the only things I feel like this movie has going for it. And I look at the role that Clark Duke played in making this particular movie. And it seems like he very much stretched himself too thin. Again, he directed, he co-wrote the script. He was one of the producers and he played one of the lead roles. And that very much feels like he took on a bit too much. And again, I can't help but admire the ambition. But it's just overall, the movie, he seems like he's the center of this movie. And the movie overall just fell flat in almost every way. So just to cap things off, a few shocking moments of violence is not enough to cover for Arkansas's bland and muddled storytelling and squandering of a solid cast. I'm going to give Arkansas a 54. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in to this episode of Real Talk. Don't forget to let me know in the comment section exactly what you thought about the movie Arkansas. Do you think I was being too harsh on the movie? Or are you in the same camp as me where you felt your $6 going straight down the paper shredder just as the film was finishing up? Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell to get notifications, and also to follow all the social media pages that I have set up for the show outlined in the description. And until next time, I'm Joe Aserno. This has been Real Talk.